In this lesson, we will explore how depth of field and sensor size are related. Unlike some of the other concepts in this course, depth of field and sensor size are a bit easier to understand, especially if you've watched all the lessons in this course so far. Consider for a moment that throughout this course, we have talked about focal length, and we have not mentioned equivalent focal length. Equivalent focal length is something that you deal with when you are using a crop sensor camera, which most of you probably are. A crop sensor camera is anything smaller than a 35 millimeter full frame camera. There is a bit of confusion about the lenses and these crop sensor cameras, because at some point, someone will have told you that a 50 millimeter lens on your Canon Digital Rebel is actually an 80 millimeter lens. The truth is that a 50 millimeter lens is a 50 millimeter lens, period. Some lenses are made so that the image circle they project onto the sensor is sized to fit a crop sensor camera, and it won't fill a full frame sensor. This would lead you to believe that these lenses are wider, but they are not. They are made lighter and with less lens elements, but are not actually wider. A crop sensor's relationship to the angle of view is pretty easy to understand. We are cropping in on the image circle that the lens projects, so we are in effect narrowing the angle of view. This makes everything appear closer or tighter. For this reason, the effect on depth of field is fairly easy to understand. If we take a photo with a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, it looks like this. If we were to put that lens on a crop sensor camera and tried to take the same photo, we would have to stand further back to get the same composition. Because the distance to our subject has increased, our depth of field gets larger just like we learned in the last few lessons. This means that as your sensor gets smaller, your depth of field will increase compared to a full frame camera. You may have noticed this with your smartphone camera or iPhone. When I first got my iPhone 4 years ago, I noticed that I could get a blurry background effect, but only if I focused on an object within six or eight inches, maybe even a foot away. In fact, we can even get our nerd hats on and calculate this to prove the point. So let's check out something really quick here. We're gonna alter our depth of field calculator so that it's no longer set up for a typical DSLR. We're gonna input the numbers for the iPhone 4 and see what we get. Now the iPhone has a fixed focal length of 3.85 millimeters. And you can see that's probably going to break a few things here until we add some of the other numbers in here. It also has a maximum aperture of f2.8 and it pretty much doesn't change because it doesn't have an iris. The circle of confusion on the iPhone 4 is actually 0 0.004. We're getting some negative values here is because we are currently focusing on or the distance to our subject is beyond the hyperfocal distance. And when you do that, it goofs up the rest of these values down here. You can see the hyperfocal distance is 52 inches. Let's say we were focusing 12 inches away. Even at 12 inches away, where on a DSLR, we would get a very small amount of depth of field. On the iPhone 4, we get about 5.76 inches at 12 inches away. If we go to six inches, look at this, we get about 1.6. But because the hyperfocal distance is so close, even at say, 24 inches, which is two feet away, we're getting about 27, almost 28 inches of total depth of field. And as soon as we hit three feet, now we're really cooking. So normally, you know, on a DSLR, if you were to focus on something about three feet away, we'd get a pretty small number there, especially if we were at aperture F 2.8. But because the sensor size is so small, we're at about 94 inches of total depth of field. A 3.85 millimeter focal length on the iPhone 4 is equivalent to about 30 millimeters on a full frame camera, which on a crop sensor camera is about 18 or 19. So let's, let's put in 19. So you can see if this same focal length or the equivalent focal length was on a crop sensor camera, which would be similar to using a 19 millimeter lens on your crop sensor Canon or crop sensor Nikon, 
at that same distance compared to the iPhone, which we were getting 94 inches of depth of field, we'd get 10 on a DSLR, on a crop sensor DSLR. Again, we punch these back in 3.85, 0 .04, 0 0.04, you can see 94 inches. So that just shows you what sensor size does to the total depth of field. Pretty much all you get on a super small sensor camera is large depth of field, unless you are focusing super, super, super close to the sensor or the lens. Unless you're focusing super, super close, pretty much everything is, you know, once you get past uh, 52 inches, you're at the hyperfocal distance. So pretty much everything is in focus at that point. For all intents and purposes, an iPhone has a large depth of field on pretty much everything. This isn't something to worry about, it's just something to be aware of. This won't really affect your photography too much unless you have a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera or some other smaller sensor camera to choose from because you're going to shoot with whatever you have. Now that we know how sensor size and depth of field are related, let's move on to our next lesson, the limits of depth of field.